the former science and higher education minister, Professor Hiru Tuldamariam, currently is working as the social sector advisor to the prime minister with a ministerial rank. She is also running as Ethiopian candidate for the African Union Commissioner of Education, Science, Technology and Innovation. Ladies and gentlemen, a very warm welcome to our weekly Aziz Dialogue. With it, I'm Shifara Lako. We'll be spending some time with the professor to stay with us. Professor, a very warm welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Happy to be here. Uh, just for starters, for the people that aren't that familiar with you, let's start with yourself. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm the first born in my family, family of four kids. And uh, I was born in Debra Marcos, mm. uh, but uh, grown up here in Addis. Well, I went to public school uh, around uh, Kuskwam because uh, my father uh, didn't afford to send me to private school. But then I did my studies uh, at Addis Ababa University, first degree, second degree. Uh, and then I did my uh, PhD uh, degree uh, in the University of Cologne, um, uh, the Institute for African Speak. Uh, it was a joint program with Addis Ababa University. And then, uh, completing my PhD, I came back to Addis Ababa University where uh, I, I worked. And uh, I actually served in the academia at Addis Ababa University, the premier uh, higher education institution of Ethiopia, the flagship institution, for about 25 years. So I spent most of my life there, and grown up there, I can say. Uh, I was really lucky enough uh, not only to uh, work to serve as an academician, as a teacher, as a researcher, and so on, but also got the chance, I mean, a unique chance to serve at the top management level mm -hmm. at the university, top leadership uh, group. So I actually practiced uh, uh, leadership uh, and management from the smallest uh, unit in, in the university, from the department. I was department head at uh, the Department of Linguistics and Philology. I was the first woman department head, and then I got promoted to uh, uh, to be uh, associate vice president for uh, academic affairs. Again, I was the first uh, woman to take up that position, so associate vice president, and then I became uh, vice president of the university. I the first woman vice president in the history of Addis Ababa University. On the side, I was also very active with my research projects. I had international collaborative research projects with NORAD, SIDA, and so on. And I got the chance to uh, publish uh, uh, like three dozens of uh, research uh, papers published in peer-reviewed uh, international journals. And I was also uh, traveling around the world and presenting my uh, research outputs in different conferences because of those international projects. Uh, and then that enabled me uh, to get promoted, uh, also profession professionally, in the academic rank, mm. from lecturer to, of course, since I did my PhD, assistant professor, and then associate professor, and then full professor uh, in, in, of linguistics. Yeah. So, I mean, luckily, I managed to uh, progress in all spheres, in the, the, the leadership, as well as in the uh, professional or uh, academic rank. And it seems for me that uh, my visibility uh, at Addis Ababa University as the first woman vice president and also became successful with my research outputs and so on, gave me the visibility helped me to be seen by, I think, government uh, body at a higher level. And then it was a call away, you know. I was invited and appointed to serve at a ministerial uh, portfolio, first for the Minister for Culture and Tourism, and then as a Minister for uh, Labor and Social Affairs, and then the third 
as a minister for science and higher education. That one was very much close to my heart since my background is uh, academia since I came from uh, university. And I knew, you know, the challenge and the opportunity, especially in the higher education system. I knew problems with the curriculum mm. and so on. So I was the founding minister, actually. I was not just a minister for science and higher education, but I was a founding minister. You know what it means? I had to build up the ministry from ground up, mm. you know, organize it, staff it, brand it, mm. and then... And, 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 yeah, it was really tough, but I successfully organized that ministry and at kickoff. And I used that landscape, that platform, to uh, reform the curriculum, to make curriculum review and uh, uh, add, you know, uh, incorporate a one-year, um, first-year program into the curriculum on so soft skills soft skills, uh, basic uh, competency uh, and, and other skill and technology uh, courses, uh, knowledge courses like, you know, critical thinking, merging technologies, communication, inclusiveness, history, uh, and more. Uh, you know, that was the plan was to align the higher education curriculum with the objective, socio-economic objectives of the nation, and to align it with the demands of the industry, and to make it fit to the 21st century job market, mm. of not only Ethiopia but also, you know, globally, so to have competent graduates. Mm. So that was I have initiated a curriculum review, and then I have implemented it, mm. and that is something that I'm proud of. But there are also other a number of. Uh, reform initiatives that I have accomplished, like differentiation of higher education mm -hmm. institutions. Mm -hmm. Before, you know, all, every university can have a, any kind of teaching program from BA to PhD in all, in a, any field, you know, regardless of the human resource it has, regardless of the infrastructure, you know, the laboratory, the workshop it has. It was just free. So, I mean, that way we cannot control uh, the quality of education. We cannot ensure to have quality graduates. Mm. So I said something is wrong. We have to work on this. And then we, have, we did a study and also benchmarked uh, other countries. And finally, we have uh, differentiated or categorized Ethiopian higher education institutions into three, into mm. research universities, uh, polytechnic or uh, uh, applied science universities, and then comprehensive universities. Mm -hmm. And then we further uh, let them have their own area of specialization, you know, which one. Like, for instance, some universities are focusing on engineering as their area of specialization, mm -hmm. others on agriculture, and still others with, you know, maybe engineering or tourism or you know, so that was also a very important reform initiative uh, that I uh, uh, I brought into the higher education uh, uh, system. So in a way that um, currently I'm, I'm holding a fourth ministerial position as an advisor to His Excellency Dr. Abi Ahmed, advisor of social, social sector, because I've been in the culture, labor, you know, tourism, education, yeah, I've covered uh, quite a number of uh, the social sector areas. So I'm trying to synergize uh, this ministerial portfolios and to, uh, you know, come up with policy um, suggestions and uh, advice. So yeah, very briefly, uh, that's me. Uh, by the way, I'm also I can consider myself as a scientist mm -hmm. because um, uh, I have published, as I told you, through like three dozens of publications peer-reviewed articles in international journals, and I'm also a duly recruited member or fellow of the Ethiopian Science Academy. I mean, that's something big. Yeah. And I'm also, uh, I got an award from Alexander Humboldt uh, Foundation as a senior scientist, uh, based on what I have done so far. 
So in any way, uh, I believe that I fit very well to this position, considering my, the qualities and the rich experience in the portfolio uh, that you know I have come across so far. My my, my path, my journey was uh, very, I can say, intense, very intensive, but then gave me the capacity, the skills, you know, managerial skills, leadership skills, and gave me the strength, the endurance uh, to, you know, uh, prepare me to work at a continental level. I'm also a member of a public diplomacy group of Ethiopia, uh, and I uh, got the chance to go to uh, Cairo years ago with this uh, group, mm -hmm. and I got the chance to talk to this me. Uh, His Excellency President Al Sisi on, on the GERD issue as a public diplomat. So I have, you know, different paths. <laughs> That's me. All right. Uh, so, uh, as you told me, you are a professor of linguistics and philology, and also you have been serving in different top government officials, of course, including uh, recently as science and higher education minister. Uh, in total in four ministerial positions. Mm -hmm. You also received uh, various awards and recognitions. So taking all these things into consideration, I take it that you can be a good model for you know, up, mm -hmm. up and coming uh, Ethiopians, especially girls, and ambitious Ethiopians in general. Uh, mm -hmm. what, what's the secret to your success, may I ask, yeah. and uh, what should they um, take from you or learn from you? My secret is Nothing but hard-working, to be honest. Uh, I'm a hard-working person. Uh, and, uh, I'm a quick learner. Uh, and I'm good with team building, building team, uh, ha you know, harmonized team and mobilizing team. So uh, I think I have a track record to mobilize and to establish uh, team spirit in, in the all positions I've taken up so far. And uh, of course I read and I work on self-development every time. You know, I, I read and I listen to motivational speaks, motivate myself and yeah, uh, and I'm fearless, you know. Uh, that's how my friends call me. I'm bold. And I take opportunities, and I capacitate myself. And, and if I believe in something, I go for it, no hesitation. Yeah. So uh, hard working is, I think, uh, the main uh, element here for my success. I, I work day and night, and I got that from my parents. My father was a teacher, uh, high school teacher. He did his his bachelor's degree at, uh, at Addis Ababa University himself. So he has been always telling us about the power of education, power of reading and writing. And so since early childhood, I was engaged you know, with this intellectual kind of intercourse, reading, writing, and, and listening, and developing uh, myself intellectually, emotionally. Professor, let's talk about your candidacy for Africa Union Commissioner of Education, uh, Science, Technology, and Innovation. Uh, now you are Ethiopian candidate for this uh, continental uh, position. Uh, what inspired you to even think about this continental uh, position? Since childhood, I've been uh, passionate about Pan-Africanism, the notion of Pan-Africanism, African Renaissance, uh, I think because of my um, late father, uh, who used to be a teacher at the high school for geography, geography of Africa and history of Africa. So it was deep inside my heart. But then when I did my PhD at uh, the University of Cologne, at the Institu Institution of African Stick, I got the chance to uh, meet uh, um, many African colleagues, African PhD students coming from uh, various corners of Africa, and I got the chance to, you know, have conversation with them about the opportunities of Africa, mm -hmm. the challenge of Africa, what needs to be changed, what needs to be fixed, 
uh, you know, and so on. So I think that has also reinforced uh, my dream to serve at a continental level. But actually, uh, I believe that this position, uh, Commissioner for Education, Science, Technology, and Innovation, is a key center for advancement of Africa into prosperous, globally influential, uh, peaceful and integrated continent, um, I mean, as it's been uh, well expressed in the Agenda 2063's aspirations. So, you know, I believe that it's, uh, it's, it's a huge calling. There is no greater calling than serving the advancement of Africa in its aim to be transformed into a prosperous and a globally influential continent. And, and I believe this commission is a key, since it's only through working on the next generation, educating the next generation, you know, cultivating the youth, that we can ensure a better Africa tomorrow. And I believe that there is, you know, I mean, this can only be achieved through quality education, through you know, fostering and nurturing uh, the deep culture of innovation and technology. Africa are relevant technology and innovation. That's the only way for us you know, to, to advance as a continent as well as, 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 a, as a nation. Because we have to, I mean, human capital is an engine for economic development. So advancing our human capital through education, science, and technology, relevant one, quality one, will give us, will uh, lead us to uh, our destination, to make the best out of African indigenous knowledge of our ancestors. We need to work on our education system and training system, skill development system. And we need to nurture science and technology. Uh, Professor, yeah. you are one of the five shortlisted, um, highly ranked top uh, candidates. Tell me about the selection process. Yeah, the selection process was really tough. And the, there was a group, a panel of eminent Africans who was responsible for the screening process. Mm. And it's for the first time in the history that African Union uh, decided to make talent-based recruitment for commissioners' positions. There are six commissioners' positions currently. So, I mean, the announcement was uh, opened, and then uh, I prepared the necessary documents and applied. And, you know, they scrutinized uh, the uh, CVs, CVs of the, all the applicants, and then I was selected for the interview. There was an interview, very tough, with the panel of eminent Africans, and then there was also group discussion where they can, you know, evaluate our team uh, participation, team spirit, and leadership skills uh, in, in, in that um, group discussion. And we also had uh, psychometric tests. Uh, so. I have passed through a uh, rigorous um, series of um, selection and screening process and uh, be able to uh, be selected, uh, shortlisted uh, as one of the five. Actually, I was uh, uh, the highest ranked uh, woman uh, oh. candidate shortlisted. But the thing is, something tricky is uh, going on in the selection. Uh, in the next stage of the uh, election process. What I heard is that, I mean, if the chair or the deputy chair of Africa Union, if one of them comes from the eastern uh, region, then commissioner will not be acceptable from the eastern region. No. So, you know, that's something that we have no control at all. So they want to keep the regional composition when they start the endorsement uh, f from uh, higher up, from the chair and deputy chair. 
so keep my fingers crossed that, uh, that you know any one of the two positions won't be taken by a member of Eastern African uh, 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 country, uh, but otherwise merit-based, uh, talent-based, uh, uh, I'm in a very good uh, uh, position uh, as endorsed by the panel of eminent uh, Africans. So we're, uh, yeah, looking forward for the final decision to be made uh, in just two weeks' time. Well, Professor, uh, let's talk about your vision. What's your vision going to be like uh, for this uh, African Union Commissioner of uh, Education, Science, Technology, and Innovation? My vision is uh, that to enable um, inclusive, African-relevant, and high-quality education for Africans and to foster deep culture of uh, innovation and technology that can unleash the potential of African youth for the betterment of the continent. Mm -hmm. And my vision is also to unleash, to unblock the indigenous knowledge of Africa, of our ancestors, you know. We have very rich indigenous knowledge that we haven't tapped away so far. So we have to make the best out of it by blending it with the uh, modern technology and science. So my vision is to unlock Africa minds for the betterment, for the advancement of Africa uh, in order to fulfill the aspirations of Agenda 2063. My vision is also to empower African youth so that they can convert our problems and challenge into opportunities, into innovations. You know, quality of life of Africans is very low currently. We are doing things manually. Now, economic development is unstable because it's not knowledge-based, it's not technology-based. So we need to empower the next generation. We need to unlock the potentials of African youth so that they can transform the continent into the global powerhouse, as, is, as it is uh, uh, stated in, in the Agenda 2063. Uh, uh, now let's also talk about this. Uh, if, you, uh, if you are given the post, what will be your top priorities? Uh, in Africa or in Ethiopia in particular? If I get elected, I will work towards uh, ensuring access to education for all. I mean, we, we have that rhetoric, uh, theoretically, but we have to, beyond rhetoric, we have to act to make this possible. And the other one is to ensure quality and Africa relevant education, that the one that uh, fits to the demands of the 21st century, the one that uh, responds to the demands, to the needs of the continent and the member states. So I will call for a bold curriculum reform, actually, if, if I get elected, to ensure, to make sure that the curriculum we have across the continent fits very well with the 21st century job market and needs and demands of the continent. We have to make sure that it will take us to the destination we want to get. Yeah. And the other one is, if I get uh, elected, I'll work toward this revitalization of African universities and African schools. Revitalization and uh, reforming and enhancing them. Number one, by uh, making sure that we have the ecosystem of education, science, technology, innovation, ecosystem, involves, it should involve all relevant stakeholders, the private sector, the industry, civic societies, the community, should take part you know, in the education and training system. 
and the ecosystem should be changed, should be balanced to accommodate all relevant stakeholders and to do things together collaboratively. That way, we'll have quality education and training, and we'll have relevant graduates for the economy and job market. And also, I will work toward this establishing um, uh, uh, leading centers of excellence, African centers of excellence. We need those. You know, I mean, we already have some, and we have to enhance them, strengthen them, but we need more important, globally leading centers of excellence for Africa in, in placed in different corners of Africa, centers of excellence. Like, for example, Africa, Ethiopia, is the origin of uh, mankind. We need to have a very strong center of excellence on archaeology, paleontology there, you know. And the whole world, let's call us from abroad, from all corners of the world should come here to get you know, uh, training, education, and to do research. And another uh, priority uh, that I would go for if I get uh, elected is to uh, incorporate uh, the values of Pan-Africanism, mm. ideals of Pan-Africanism -Pan in, into the uh, educational system so that our children, right from the early age, should, you know, develop values of Pan-Africanism, Pan-African identity. They need to have Pan-African identity to know and, you know, go, I mean, grow uh, through it. And I should also, I would, I would like to go for uh, harmonization of accreditation systems in African higher education. Uh, institutions. And we need to have standardized systems. That will allow us staff mobility, uh, student mobility across the continent. I mean, a student from Ethiopia can go to uh, Nigeria or South Africa and, and continue his or her education and there if we have, you know, uh, harmonized accreditation system and qualification standard. Uh, just like the European Union Erasmus Mundus, you know, program, they have this program across European uh, Union uh, member states. I also look forward, if I get uh, elected, to uh, work toward this uh, establishing scholarship, Pan-African scholarship institutions, where bright uh, African boys and girls from the various corners of the continent come together and assemble to receive truly African education for the benefit of Africa and do research on African issues so that we can produce the future of African scientists the future of the next generation of African leaders and African innovators and Afri African craftsmen and women. Another thing that uh, I think we need to focus on uh, is um, having a digitally literate uh, citizens. Everybody should be digitally literate in this world. We have to prepare our youth you know, to be digitally literate. Otherwise, I mean, look what we have gone through, the pandemic, the COVID-19 uh, season. We're still suffering. <laughs> We're still into it. So uh, our children, they couldn't make it in the school. Schools and universities were closed. They had to go back home and to follow their education, their lessons online that in most of African uh, countries, infrastructure was, was, was not there. We have no in infrastructure, no internet. And the kids, they don't have gadgets. And they don't have the skills, the digital skills. So, you know, they, they, they were cut off. They couldn't continue 
to their education in, on this uh, online platform while the rest of the world has been doing well. So, I mean, this pandemic, we never know how long it will stay with us anyway. Well, no one can predict. And we're not sure if we don't get something, you know, different in, in, in the future, so, I mean, another pandemic, a human made or another crisis. So we need to make sure that everybody is digitally literate and can access to education on different modalities. I know Ethiopia, uh, being uh, uh, one of the founding members of uh, Africa Union and the former OAU, and Ethiopia being the host of this institution in its capital city, Addis Ababa, and hosting African Union here. But Ethiopia has never taken up a higher leadership position in this institution. I mean, that's not fair. We are contributing a lot. And we need to take part in the leadership arena of this uh, prestigious institution, African Union. And I'm looking forward to take up this commissioner position for education, science, and technology and to make a difference. Finally, let me ask you this question. Uh, what's your view about Africa and also transforming it into a better developed continent? Yeah, I believe that our continent, Africa, has a great potential you know, to advance and to, to get transformed into the global powerhouse of the future. I say this because Africa has uh, all what it takes. You know, it has the largest, youngest population ever in the planet. We have the largest energetic, dynamic youth in our continent, which is not found anywhere else in the globe. You know? And we do also have plenty of natural resources in this continent. Also, Africa is located on a very strategic place and position. So that's also another advantage for us. But the thing is we are still in poverty, we are still lagging behind, and we're not advancing, and we're, you know, having a number of uh, issues and challenges and problems. Our youth, that are suffering from migration, violence, radicalization, you know, joblessness, and so so for our Africa really to advance and to develop economically and to have a sustainable uh, economic growth, we, there is no other way but we need to work on the next generation, on the youth. How? Through quality education, through innovation, you know, and through Africa-relevant kind of curriculum. So unless we work on our youth, even if we have, you know, plenty of natural resources around, yeah. even if we have, uh, you know, wonderful weather and, and position geopolitically in, in a very good uh, post in the globe, but still uh, remain in our current circumstance in poverty. So we have to be quick and alert to transform our youth, to work on our youth. I think that's and should be a priority. That's why I say this commission is, is, is critical, it's influential to transform the whole continent. Africa can come out as a stronger and globally influential continent. So we have to make sure that we work in a different way, strategically, on our use, the use of Africa, because that's the key for the future of Africa, and that's the key to see the Africa we want. Well, Professor, I wish you every success in your campaign, and thank you so much for your wonderful perspectives, and good luck. Thank you very much. Well, the viewers, that was Professor Hirut Waldemariam talking to us. Thanks a lot for being with us so far, and till I see you with another program, it's goodbye from me, Shifar Alak. Bye-bye.